What's up, guys? Iggy here with Outtech Unlimited, and today we're doing a simple outside the waistband on the foam press. So we're going old school on this one, and um, no bells and whistles, nothing really to it. It's going to be EMT carbon fiber, which I got the sheet right here, and it is going to be right-handed with 1.75 loops. And uh, these are BDS loops. I get these from Holster Smith along with all my other material. Uh, these ones I'm going to cut down a 45-degree angle, which I'll show you how I do that. I have my heat press already set up, my foam is warm, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let's prep the Taurus G3 full size, get it uh, all good to go, press it out, and, and get it gone, get it out of here. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've done a video, hope everyone had a good Father's Day. Uh, I have been slammed, and uh, I have finished a lot that I, uh, oh god, everything that's coming at me, I have finished rush orders, store orders, everything is, is behind me now. Um, Still a little behind on orders. I'm working on them as fast as I can. I'm literally doing about 20 hour days and uh, I'm pushing out. My goal was five orders a day, which means I'd be caught up in really no time at all. Luckily, it's slow season, which is fantastic uh, for all you other holster manufacturers out there. Summer months, this time of the year is slow season. So it is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, it's good and bad. But I love it because it gives me a chance to catch up even more, which is what my goal is, is to be 100% with everything. So um, I have a couple orders on my desk that are uh, going to be pretty much throughout the day. So you guys, uh, if you have an order in, you're going to see shipping uh, confirmation emails when uh, those finally go through my system. And uh, I don't have, what am I on right now? I don't have much of March left. Uh, I am actually, I am right there. That's all my March. So uh, that's almost done. It's only a couple days worth. And then I'm going on to April, which that should fan out pretty quick as well. Um, at least that's the plan. So I have a couple of cool builds I'm coming up that I'm going to be filming. Uh, one of them is going right out to Hawaii. And that's going to be full custom prints for a uh, VP9. I mean, a Walther PPQ, a 4-inch and a 5-inch. So um, that's going to be cool. Stay tuned for that one. But for now, let's just get to the Taurus G3 and uh, get it out of here. But it's... It's Juneteenth, so it's a stupid federal holiday, and mail's closed, so I won't go out till tomorrow. But anyways. All right, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and throw on my rail covers. Um, I actually, I haven't decided if I actually want to sell these or not, um, but I am able to get them and sell them, so that's that's pretty nice. But let me uh, let me actually show you what they look like. So here they are right here. I'm probably going to put them on my website. I could probably either sell them individually or in these packs of threes. These are how I buy them. And uh, yeah, so I get them. I cover the rail on it because otherwise, if you don't block the rail, each one of these teeth is going to be a, um, a, a, a retention spot and it's going to wear down on the grip. So I use these rail covers. I've actually used these the entire time I've been in business. So uh, I'm just going to continue doing them. So that's what they look like. Like I said, if you want to see them on my website, if you guys want to get a hold of these, uh, be my guest. Let me know in the comments. And if uh, we get enough yay or nays, I'll, I'll throw them in there. So anyways, moving on. Let's get our blue tape here. Again, this is going to be right-handed. So what I'm going to do is I always put a little bar right here to uh, kind of guide the pistol in. So that's number four. And there's number five. Now I have a new way for doing uh, outside the waistband for retention. Uh, my old way, um, for example, I used to take something like this, throw it right here, and do one retention point, and then this would all be closed off, and I usually cut class to the muzzle. Don't really like that, because uh, I've kind of developed this new way of doing it, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. But let's get this completely blocked. Uh, that's the blocking I'm going to use right here. Um, also, I've noticed if you stick it down too far, um, it is possible that you're going to get a little bit of a wiggle. I like to have this part exposed. That way, uh, part of the holster holds that in place as well. So you're not getting a little bit of that uh, jiggle jiggle. All right. And then we have to take in consideration this right here. Um, they're not that big, so we really don't have to worry about it too much. Um, but we're just going to get a piece that fits there. And let's see what I have already cut. All 
<laughs> Blink. It's massive. Actually, that right there would be perfect. And we'll cut, up, cut. Yep. I'm okay with that. Or, better yet, let's do the angles. Kind of angled up this way. So, right there would be perfect. Alright, and we are blocked. Now, cut the retention because I oops, I know I do not have a plate already cut for this. Alright, got a piece of scrap right here. And just do a trace. And what we can do is come off this way. And since I used that, grab a straight edge here. And that will come straight off, like so. And then same with this area. And we'll give it a little bit. All right. Cut, cut. And that's going to be your retention piece. And here we go, all set up. And then, like I said, this is the new way I like to block my outside the waistband holsters. So let's press it. Black is in the press, and the carbon fiber is in my oven. Now, this is getting annoying. So uh, last night, Father's Day night, I was shopping for a new um, heat press. So I'm either going to get a second 15 by 15, which I don't think I will. Um, or I'm going to get a 16 by 20. That way I could do both of them at the same time because this is for the birds. And invest in tools that make your job easier and make your just make your life better. So um, I'm probably going to set this aside, keep this as a backup, but invest in a 16 by 20, which is uh, in the $500 area. So we'll see. Obviously, that is the way I cut these. Now, if you do not feel comfortable cutting these on a bandsaw like that, go ahead and use a Dremel or your scroll saw. You're going to have to get close. You could also tilt the bed. Um, that'll give you a little bit more grip strength on it when you're doing it or build a jig for it. But this is how I've done it. This is how I've always done it. I've never had an issue because you have to pay attention. Just a little disclaimer right there. I just want to say preheated foam in the summertime is still a beautiful thing. It is 70 degrees in my shop right now. It's a little bit cooler outside, which is fantastic. Um, right after I finish this, I'm taking a quick little break. But, uh, yeah, check this out. Brand new foam, and then obviously it was uh, it was heated. But look, just, I can't, yeah, just, that's perfect. Um, back in the day, I would have done this with one piece of foam on each side. So it literally would have been... Just sandwiched right in the middle of these. Now I do two on the top, two on the bottom. And what I have found is no matter how thick you put one side of the uh, blocking, as in, you know, this is way up, as in if you're doing a, uh, a hood or uh, bumping out your RTI plate or anything like that, doing four pieces of foam centers it right in the middle. So if you look at that, that is pretty damn centered. That is pretty nice. And again, that definition is just out of this world also you notice these ribs those are obviously from if i can get it here the rail covers that i use right here and the rail sitting inside that 
So it looks bumpy, it is bumpy, but you will never feel that when you draw your holster. So keep that in consideration. And that's how I have always done it. And I, I like it that way. And yeah, so let's mark it, drill it, cut it, sand it, bend it, ship it. And then I gotta feed the dogs because that breaks not for me. Yeah, they're just waiting for lunch. And it is 46 minutes past the lunchtime. Don't worry, I'm a good dog dad. All right, now what I do is get your that ready. And then, oh, ha, I need the belt loops. The belt loops that I cut. Let me see, I got the angles on them. And we are going to need our tool right here. All right, so uh, I like to do a nice firm grip. So you can go ahead, put your finger there. You can measure it, whatnot. Um, generally, it's going to be where the end of the bend is. That's how it usually goes. So I'm going to set here. This is called a contour gauge. You can get it at Home Depot for cheap money or on Amazon or anything like that. Again, contour gauge. Uh, now, remember, if you go too low, you are going to have a floppy holster. If you go too high, you're not going to be able to grip it. And we'll do that. So I'll continue that out. This is going to go this way. So, like so, it's going to follow up the trigger guard. Like that. And then we're going to have a piece. It's going to cut right there. Now, just remember... When you're cutting it on the bandsaw, and do not cut that line, cut this line. I used to cut that a lot, and then I'd have to <laughs> make it up. So, make sure you spread these out enough. If you don't want them too close, because it'll rotate onto it. You don't want them too far away, because it'll be a mile wide. And what I do is I mark the bottom, and draw the line. Line that up. Mark the bottom hole. Draw the line. And take my drill guides. And that is not it. That's it. We'll go ahead, line up our drill guides. And this is where you want to pretty much make the decision whether you want th three eyelets on each side or four. Um, if I go four down, that's not too bad, but we're going to have a small bottom right there. Or we could go halfway and then cut it like that, which I think I'm going to do. So that's less material. Uh, we're still going to have this going across. And then at the side channel, we'll go up just like so. Bring that across. So we'll start the bend here. Which is perfect because it ends right there. All right. And what we'll do is bing, bing, bing. Drill that out. And then our retention is going to go right there after I drill it quarter inch and just mark that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a line so I can go ahead and get my clamps on the drill guide Separate it in half. I'm taking eyelets just in case it decides to separate some more, and that's going to hold it together to keep our alignment. You want to keep that alignment because you don't want to drill a hole where it's supposed to be for the retention, and then it ends up being in the trigger guard or down further. And that one is not quarter inch. And again, clean your hole. Now I'm going to set the eyelets and then we'll cut it.
At this point, it's real easy. Go ahead, take your firearm, put it in the holster, and I'm gonna go ahead, bend the ears on the vise. So, again, real easy. Let's actually get two two minutes. Already went ahead and cleaned it. Uh, we actually did that before I bent it, and, uh, whoop, and you can see it. So it's looking good. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead get the hardware on. Um, EMT red carbon fiber right hand 175 loops. So this is a uh, quarter inch and quarter inch. I like to use quarter inch on uh, pretty much everything I build. Go ahead and throw those on. And these are a half inch. A little bit of, little bit of dust inside though from sanding. I'll clean that up real quick. Easier to sand when it's not on the holster. All right. A little bit of Loctite on there. Make sure you put the correct one on. She is, and one more thing left to do. Again, thank you guys for watching this video and a huge, huge, huge thank you to Holstersmith and KnifeKits.com for uh, supplying all the material for these builds uh, and, you know, getting the molds and everything from them as well. So everything used in this video, uh, hardware, material, even mold wise, did come from uh, Holstersmith and KnifeKits.com. Uh, when you go there, tell them I sent you. But again, hope you guys learned a thing or two, and I am absolutely happy with the way that I now block my outside the waistband holsters, because I just think it looks so much cleaner, and you actually have the ability to add more retention spots if you want to, but I like the bottom open just like that, so dirt, debris, and water comes out no problem. So again, start to finish on a outside the waistband, no bells and whistles, and a red carbon fiber for the Taurus G3 full size. See you later. Love you. Bye.